Micah stands firm for God. That's what we got to do. Amen. And for your, those who do not have a Sunday school book, you can crack your Bibles open and you can find it in uh, Micah 2 and 4. And it probably don't seem to be, but I'm excited this morning. I've been looking at this lesson all, all week long, and there's so many points in this lesson. But Micah is one of the minor prophets. Uh, he's contemporary of uh, Isaiah, Amos, and Hosea. And they wrote some, some uh, similar wordings. And that was a stern warning coming from Almighty God. As we get into the lesson, we want to look at the uh, we want to look at the principles. How many of you have your Sunday school books with you? Amen. By the show of hands, Amen. you have them, huh? Right. We want to look at the facts to see how standing firm for God can sometimes be challenging in an immoral culture. Principle to understand some of the consequences of not following the Lord. And of course, application. To listen to those who lift up the word of God and urge us to obey despite our fleshly desires. Wow. Old Testament, Old Testament, Old Testament. If you look in the book of Deuteronomy, you will find, I think around 28, 20, 28 27, there is a covenantal contract that God has written up, blessing and curses. And, and we have agreed, God's people have agreed to that covenantal contract. And, and God says, listen, if you do this, I'll do that. But on the other hand, if you do not, it forces God's hand to bring judgment upon his people. A loving father. If he loves you, he will discipline you. And we don't talk much about God's discipline. Bible tells us he chastens those whom he loves. And a lot of times he will take the greater evil to punish the lesser evil, which is us. Sometimes he will take the big bad wolf and punish Goldilocks and the three bears. Yes, yes, he will. He, he will take the greater evil and impose punishment on his people. You say, why is that, preacher? Because in between Goldilocks and the three bears eating some porridge, they got off track. In between Goldilocks and the three bears going to the grocery store, going to the hair salon or the barbershop, they gotten off the beaten pathway. Here in the Old Testament, you see time and time again, we, God's people, we always get off the beaten pathway, right? But here God comes in and takes the enemy to beat us back or to testize us, get us back on track, amen? And here, this is simply a classic example of breach of contract. That's all it is. It's when, it's when we violate the standards of God, it forces him to move upon us, right? And it gets our attention. You know, some of us inadvertently disobey God, and then there are some of us willfully disobey him. But either way it goes, we must pay the consequences, right? Classic case of, of, of breach of contract. And here God, here, here God, look, at, look with me in, um, in uh, Micah 2 and 4. And that day shall one take up a parable against you. And lament with a doleful lam lamentation and say, we be utterly spoiled. He had changed a portion of my people. How had he removed it from me, turning away he had divided our fields? As I stated before, God's people got themselves in a pickle. They got themselves in between a rock and a hard place. And, 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 and uh, the prophet had to come tell the people, hey, listen, there's judgment will be passed down to you if you do not quickly turn around. See, a lot of times God would allow us to pass our exit up and go a few miles down the road. 
Then he, and then he would give specific instruction. Hey, listen, I need for you to turn around right away. Micah had to come tell God's people, hey, listen, enough is enough. I need for you to turn around right away. This immoral, uh, immoral behavior, reprehensible behavior that God's people were showing before Almighty God, he was simply tired. Yeah. Micah, come here. I need you to go down and tell my people I'm fed up. I'm tired. I reached a tipping point. People of God, can I say this? It's not Houston we have a problem. It's church. We have a problem. We constantly rebel and rebel and rebel and rebel. Our God is sitting in heaven. And people of God, he see how we're living. He see how we're treating him. He see how we're treating those who beneath us, our brothers and our sisters, a classic case of breach of contract. So God tells Michael, hey, go tell my people. That I'm going to bring the big, the big bad wolf in. I'm going to bring the enemy in to suppress them in so much. In such a way that they're going to be lamenting. They're going to be crying and weeping. Basically, lamenting is a passionate way to show sorrow. Have you ever been in a situation where God has hand down judgment? And all you can do is weep and cry. All you can do is get down on your knees. But God will allow the enemy to come in and suppress to make fun of us when we stumble and fall. They're sitting back saying, nah, 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 nah. I mean, we grew up on that, right? When we fall, the enemy would come in and poke fun at us. And not only that, they would take our fields and our lands. They would take that which God has given us and take it unto themselves. Guess what? God does not change. He is a God that does not lie. He will not be mocked. And a classic case of breach of contract. This is what happens, right? Follow me. Verse 5. Therefore thou shalt have none that shall cast a cord by lot in the congregation of the Lord. Prophecy ye not say they to them that prophecy. They shall not prophecy to them that they shall not take shame. Disgrace. Disgrace. Let's look. Let's go back at verse five here. There will be no one legally to divide as 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 God had allowed when there was land and property. God will allow the right people in place to divide the land up. But guess what? When when things are out of order, and when God is out of place, He will allow the enemy to come in, take away that which He has given you, and divide it up amongst the, the evil ones. Amen. He would do that, church. So we got to be so careful how we handle God and his business. I don't know about you. If God gives me something, I want to keep it. If he gives me something, I want to cherish it. If he gives me something, I want to take care of it. Amen? Amen. Verse 7. This is tricky. This is tricky. Verse 7. Look at with me. Look at with me. As, as Micah speaks, O thou that are named the house of Jacob, which is simply another name for Israel, God's people, is the spirit of the Lord strained? Yeah, he's upset. He's upset. He's upset. But look at the dialogue here. Here's, here's a question here. Here's a question here. Uh, um, are these the doings? Wait a minute. God doing this? Follow me. Right. Do not my words do good to him that walk it upright? Here's the question here. Here's the question. Is Since we are God's people, since we are God's people, we should act like that. Right? right. right? Since, since we are connected with God, huh? since we are with Abraham's seed on down to the generation, but we're not acting like that. We have a classic case of disobedience. People of God, we have lost our places, some of us, because of the consistency of disobedience. We believe that we can walk before God's holy court and live any kind of way. We cannot do it. Pastor constantly preach and preach and preach, and there is no change. Some of the words fall on stony ground that will not grow. Some of the words will reach the heart, the fertile heart. And we'll grow, and you'll see the sanctification process continue to go on in our lives. 
Oh, boy. But, but here's the promise. Here's the promise. Do not my words do good to him that walk it upright. People of God, if you look at the golden text, it's related to that scripture. The Lord knoweth the day of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. Here in history, we will enjoy some of the inheritance. But our, our, our ultimate goal, inheritance, is in glory. It's in, it's in glory land. And so, and so God will reward those who are upright. Yeah. Who are faithful, he rewards those what? That diligently seek him. That's the kind of God we serve. And people of God, he hands down judgment accordingly. He's a righteous God. He's just in handing down judgment. If he hands down judgment this way, hands down reward that way, guess what? He's God. He can do that. He dis distributed according to his sovereign plan and purpose. Amen. This lesson is good. <laughs> Follow me along. Even of late, my people is risen up as an enemy. You remember the other day, the other week, Pastor David was talking about friend. He gave us the definition of friend, how friends will help you, how friends would encourage you, how friends would be there. Here we have turned our backs on God in this lesson right here. He said, now. You're my enemy. You're no longer a friend. People of God, when you're on the other side of the street and God's enemy, it's a terrible thing to fall in the hands of a living God and become his enemy. Oh, when God opposes you, I'd rather for my, my, my supervisor or the president of the United States oppose me than to God to oppose me. Every good and perfect gift come from above every good and perfect gift that all the things that we have come from him amen so now so now you have taken garments you who in leadership position God is talking about these folks possibly in leadership position that has suppressing the poor taking their garments away from them unjustly stealing from them does that sound familiar today we have some leaders right here today using the laws to suppress some of the poor people. Keeping them from getting the goods and the help that they need. That's a dangerous thing, people God. You're opposing now the people and God. Amen. We got the some of us have the wrong folks in leadership position. Mishandling God's business. Can I tell you that's a dangerous thing to do? mishandle God's business is going to force him to move it's going to get his attention woe be unto you if you if we back up a little bit and and, and go to the go to that first verse and, and and Micah woe be unto you that means warning sister yes and that's coming from above woe we must be mindful and careful how we govern ourselves before God before this holy God, people of God, and how we handle his business. Amen? Amen. Verse 9. The woman of my people have ye cast out from their, from their uh, places, houses, from their children. Have ye taken away my glory forever? Now you, you're treading more on dangerous ground. Okay, you're in violation already, right? But now you're going further and further into violation where you, you're tempted to steal God's glory. It's a dangerous thing to suppress the, the poor. It's a dangerous thing to suppress the widows and the orphans. It's a dangerous thing, people of God. And it's going right on today. Even in some of these churches, we're not giving the widows and the orphans what they need. It's dangerous. It's dangerous, so now you're stealing or tempting to steal God's glory. Dangerous. And you're causing him to move. He see the, he see the immoral acts that some of us are committing. This God of ours, he's a jealous God. He is a holy God. He, he, he will hand down judgment accordingly. People... There are some preachers 
I can't listen to it. Here this lesson is impacted with false prophets and false teachers. You know, I'm not poking fun. Can I throw this in? The gentleman that, that talked about prosperity, 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 prosperity. I'm not knocking him. But my spirit, I could never take hold to his ministry. Creflo Dollar, can I say that? And I'm not bashing him. But understand this. When you're preaching God's word, you got to preach it in season and out of season. You got to, you got to tell it as it is. But here Micah had to address, address the false prophets in this lesson. And here, here's what Charles Spurgeon said about false, false prophets. And I quote, man-made ministers are of no use in this world. And the sooner we get rid of them, the better we are. I didn't write that. Man made false prophets. Many been called. Few been chosen. You who are preaching prosperity and not preaching the other side of God's uh, conditions for our lives, woe be unto you. In this lesson right here, Michael comes around and to tell the people, hey, there's judgment coming down on you. These false prophets say, listen, brother, we don't want to hear that. We, we, they, they dug a hole and put their head in the sand. We don't want to hear that. Anytime when you come to people with the absolute truth and they do not want to accept the absolute truth, let me tell you something. A lot of times these folks are false prophets and false teachers. Dr. Spurgeon said, hey, the sooner we get rid of them, the better off we don't leave them in position. If you know they haven't been called, don't let them stay in position. Get them in check. Put them in check. It, it, sit them down. Because what it do, it hurts the body if you don't. Amen. Many have been called. Few have been chosen. And so Michael is battling the false prophets. Michael is bringing the absolute truth, telling these people, if you do not turn around right away. People of God, our God is getting tired of us. It's late in the fourth quarter, minutes left in the game. Yeah. Judgment is coming. We don't want to hear it. As we see all the creation groaning for Christ's return, as we see all of this killing going on, this robbing going on, what do we do as a people of God? Michael had to come tell the people of God, hey, listen, tighten up on your backstroke. Tighten up on your backstroke. I see your works. Oh, but we, we continue to dibble and dabble in sin, weigh ourselves down in sin. We come in the house of worship every Sunday. There is no change. Woe, woe be unto us. The latter part of this lesson, the latter part of this lesson, if a man walketh in the spirit of falsehood, do lie saying, I will prophesy unto thee of wine and of strong drink. He shall even be the prophet of, listen, you got your own, you got your own, uh, uh, those who, who, who you listen to, those who tickle your ears and appease to your ears. You like those type of people, right? Yeah. You, you, you got the TV shows that, that you uh, tune into that gives you no Christian values whatsoever to help you to grow, help the sanctification process to form in our life. You like, them, you like those TV shows. You like those, 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 some of those deacons, some of those preachers, some of those laymen out there that's tickling your ears. But guess what? They're not giving you the truth. They're not telling you that the wages of sin is death, that the gift of God is eternal life. If a preacher, pastor keep talking to you about prosperity and he never talking to you about damnation, get away from him. Get out of, get out of the vicinity. We want to, we want to, we want to, we want to, I, I'm not, I'm not knocking a gentleman, Joel Osteen, feel good preaching. The brother gets up and I, I, please forgive me, I am not knocking him, but you got to tell me how can I get better? You, you can't tell me I can remain comfortable in my sins. I was ministering to a person a few weeks ago, and they was living that alternative lifestyle. They say, Rev, well, there's some preachers that'll eat you up. I say, what do you mean? She said, well, 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 there's some that's going to tell me this and tell me that. I say, let me tell you this. They're going to tickle your ears, but I am going to encourage you in the way of the Lord. It's not the idea of competition, but it's the idea of bringing you the absolute truth. 
so that you can have a better relationship with God. So when his heart stopped beating, the lungs were no longer inhale and exhale. The eyelid is shut for the last time. You will have a place in glory. I've been commissioned and called by Christ. I don't know about you, but I have a mission. And that's to bring people to Jesus Christ. I'm not in it to win and to fame and fortune, but I'm in it so that I can satisfy my Lord and my Savior. Stand firm against these false prophets. You know, Michael, I mean, uh, Jude tell us that we should contend earnestly for the common salvation. What do you mean by that, preacher? We, we've been taught about God's principles, precepts, and standards. We need to stick to what we've been taught. This new age gospel out here tell me, tell those you can live any kind of way. You can do how you want to do. You can mistreat those people how you want to mistreat those people. But let me tell you something. God's eyes are everywhere. And he hands down judgment accordingly. Let me say this. Stand firm with me as Michael stood firm back in the day. You know, Michael had to come tell the people, hey, listen, your body is here with me. But your mind is on the other side of town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you worship me with your lips. But your heart is on the other side of town. God is not pleased, people. God is not marked. His eyes are wide open on how we are handling his business. And people, I tell you what, I want to be a friend of God. I'm going to stand firm to, to, to the last trap. I'm going to stand firm until, until the end is, is here. I'm not going to sway. I'm going to stand firm. You can call me what you want, self-righteous, however you do it. But I'm going to stand firm. And I encourage you to stand firm. Look at the title of that lesson. Michael stands firm for God. Join with me to stand firm for God. Amen. By show of hands, how many of you have your Sunday school books with you? Amen. Who do not have a Sunday school book? I got a, I got a homework assignment. I got a challenge. I got a challenge. Get you a book after class. Take a few minutes during the week. Study your lesson. And when you see me next Sunday, have a question or answer for me. We, right. we can talk about it. These are life-changing messages here. Pastor can't give it all. He can't tell it all behind the pulpit. But I, I challenge you to do your homework. These lessons are beautiful and they're life-changing. Amen? How many minutes I have left? That's it? <laughs> Stand firm. Three minutes, three minutes, three minutes. Any... Anybody want to interject anything? Come on, preachers, give me something. That's good? We good. I'm going to sit down. We good then. Amen?